Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And wanted to film the coloring process that I'm using for this little guy. Um, I have a client who has requested a coloring kit or at least color charts so that she can color this cute little dachshund based on her own little dachshund. And originally I had started out, I'm gonna just flip a, another a sample of this on top of this one. Um, so those were the colors I originally started out, but her dog has a lot of black and a lot of red. So I have switched the color scheme to what you see here. Now I always start out with the face because the face to me is where, of course, there's the most expression. Um, it's what you're going to look at first. I mean, most people are drawn to the eyes, and so you need to make the face fairly dramatic uh, when you go to color it so that it stands out. I mean, I, I think you can com contrast the two of these together. Um, that looks quite a bit more dramatic, mainly because the way the yellow and the blue are so sharp in contrast. Whereas by using the brown over here, um, not that that's bad, but I don't think there's quite as much uh, drama going on. Uh, it doesn't grab your attention as much as the one up here does. Now, the other thing that I'd like to point out is her dog is primarily black, according to her email. So when you are doing a very uh, detailed pattern such as this, and you're using a very dark color, I actually like to go ahead and color all the dark areas first, because that helps define what the rest of the coloring should be. By And this is kind of a contrast to when you're in quilting, you focus on negative space or the white space. In this particular case, the negative space is all of the black. So I wanted to define the black areas first, which actually helps me decide where I'm going to put the rest of the color um, by kind of creating patterns. Like for instance, this looks like uh, a, a, a medallion with kind of connecting necklaces here on his chest and it looks like it continues down this way. Now, it, it, you know, before, and I'm, I'm, I, I think we can flip back over and look at this one. You can see it's, it's a lot more difficult to see all these patterns when there is so much white space and so much detail in the pattern itself. So by going back and defining all of the dark spaces, it helps train the eye to look for where the color should go next. Now, the other thing I'd like to point out, um, when you are dealing with black areas such as this, you really should go ahead and coat it with your fabric medium. And I did some of this last night um, as I started this, but, um, and this will dry clear, don't worry. Um, I know everybody looks at this stuff sometimes and thinks, oh no, it's going to dry milky, but it's not. So I'm just putting down the fabric medium on all the black first. And then what I'm going to do is let it dry completely. Um, when you use black, obviously the strongest color in the palette, you, you don't want to run the risk of coloring it all first and then moving on to say the yellow or moving on and even to the red and then putting the fabric medium down because it is very possible that the black can bleed into any of the other colors. By going ahead, and I'm just gonna grab some of the excess fabric medium here and put it down here. By doing the black first and allowing it to dry, of course, that makes it easier to subsequently color the rest of the dog in the various different colors that you're planning on using without the fear of the fabric uh, rather, excuse me, the black running into the other colors. So just a tip, if you are ever going to use any dark color, actually, even 
even a bl dark blue like that, you would definitely want to put all of your dark blues down first. Put your uh, fabric medium down, let it dry, and then come back and fill in with the lighter colors. The other question that I get when determining a new color scheme is particularly on an on one like this, how do you choose where to place the darker color? I actually look at the form that I'm coloring and I look for patterns. Um, and, and let me see if I can explain that. For instance, let's focus on his neck. We see that there are various different rings around the neck. By applying the black to certain of these rings, that helps define his neck area. Likewise, if we travel down, you see these swirls that come across on either side of his chest. That helps define the chest. Likewise, for instance, the feet. Um, the feet are, are easily defined by the little toe areas. Same thing here with various stripes along the body and along the back of the leg back here. So if you've got a pattern that is highly detailed, such as this one, look for those kind of patterns. And by applying the dark color first, that will help you distinguish the parts that define the entire design itself. So as I'm working this black, and applying the fabric medium to it. Um, just a couple of tips. When I'm working in small areas like this, I tend to have just about that much fabric medium. I don't know if you can see that really well, but I've just got it on the, on the tip of my brush. And I work almost straight up and down. And I start in the middle and I move back and forth towards the stitch line on one side, again, keeping my brush almost upright, and then back towards this, the other stitch line. Um, the reason you wanna do this is if you held it more like a pencil, you're more apt to get this on a piece of the white, and of course being black, uh, the minute it goes on there, it's almost impossible to remove. You would probably have to use acrylic paint to cover it up, and then that would leave a blotch on your subsequent color. Um, so try to keep your brush upright. Move it in small little strokes back and forth. Only get, again, about that much fabric medium on your brush start in the center and, and work your way towards the stitch line. So another little trick that I like to do with these patterns is create kind of this effect right here where you put a lighter color and then graduate out to a strong contrasting color. Now the way to do that without blending out the lighter color is you wanna go ahead and lay the light color down first. Then come in with your fabric medium and just apply it to where the color is. In this case, this is sun yellow and I'm just applying the fabric medium to that. Now, when this dries, what I end up doing then is what I did here. There's actually only two colors here. There is the yellow and then iris blue, which is this color right here. Um, I lay it on very lightly on either side of the yellow then once that has dried, then I come back in and very strongly color, usually dipping the tip into the fabric medium 
and running it just along the edge of the stitching. It gives the sense of a graduated color change. Now you're gonna get a tiny bit of greenish in here just by the overlap of the two colors. But by letting the yellow dry first, by putting it down first, you can then graduate the colors and keep the gradation uh, as strong looking as possible and as, as clean looking as possible. Now another tip, um, and this is for these pesky little tiny areas right in here where you can see there's still white fabric there. Um, I'm really big on making sure that everything is colored. So I've taken my tangerine, very, very sharp tip. I'm going to dip it directly into the fabric medium. Just get it at the tip and then you can come in and go over and switch your pencil tip back and forth and run it along the edge of the stitching to get all that coloring in. Uh, the stitching is there to keep you inside the lines effectively, but it can also make it hard to get in there. In fact, I'm gonna go over this little spot right here, right along that line. You see how now it's nice and colored in and you don't have any of the white showing through, which uh, in my opinion gives you away as a beginner. So I'll be coming back and getting these reds, the dark reds, the chili red. Looks like even the blue could use some too, but make sure that your tip is really good and sharp before you do that. It will be the only time I ever tell you to sharpen a pencil is so that you can dip it in the fabric medium, go directly into a very tiny area like that. It will apply the color and set the color all at the same time. So the yellow is dry and I've started with this blue, the iris blue, and all you're going to do is basically color up to the edge of the yellow. Um, it, if you go over, what will happen is when you go to put the fabric medium on, you'll get a tiny bit of green. You can probably see that a little bit right here. Actually, that's probably no big deal. Um, but if you want to stay clean in your color, then just take it right up to the yellow, maybe just a skosh before you get there. Um, like right here, there's, you know, there's this very fine bit of white in between, but you can see what's happening as I, as I color this in, you're, you're creating this nice gradation. Um, all right, so there you go. Um, let me now grab my brush, dip it in the fabric medium. Uh, let's just do this one side first. So see there, now you're getting a very nice distinct blue against the yellow. Uh, and it's because I let this dry. And it only took about 20 minutes for it to dry. Um, most of the time when I'm in class, you know, we, we don't really do this a whole lot because it just takes up too much time. Um, but if you're at home doing this, then I encourage you to give this technique a try when you're putting color together that's very close. Now, I have my iris blue, and where what I'm going to do, you can see that I'm getting a very sharp, distinct color because that area is still wet. I'm coming along and just really darkening the edge right along the stitch line. This is also gonna show you where you may be missing fabric medium because if you don't get that strong line like I didn't up there, that means there's fabric medium missing and you need to put it along the edge. Now I come along and I put down some more fabric medium just to maybe get rid of some of the harsh line and to make sure it's all in the stitching. Okay, so that is how you do gradated 
gradation um, with two distinct different colors. And uh, I'll, I'll do the other side following. Now, if you wanted to, I suppose if you really wanted to put some of the green in, you know, you could pull out like apple green and, and put it in there if you wanted that, you know, yellow, green, blue type of look. Um, I'm happy right now with just the yellow and the blue. We'll see what my client says when she sees this. But uh, it, it, again, this is to learn how to do this specific technique and uh, how to keep the colors very distinct. Now, an another, again, with these kind of patterns, just little, little simple tricks here to try to make it easy to color right here and right here. Of course, I showed you earlier how you can dip your pencil tip into the fabric medium and color directly. But here's another trick, and I'm using a very nice pointed brush, and I'm going to pull out this red, and I'm going to just drag it along the edge of the pencil tip, and that gives me just a bit of color at the tip. That allows me to come in and place it very carefully in a very tiny area with a nice round tipped brush that has a nice point to it. And just, you know, don't put a ton on your on your brush, just get enough to, to get you going. And you can see that you can get in there and I'm gonna need some more fabric medium. Uh, come in there, get your tip moistened again, and you can place your color very, very carefully. I'm going to do the same over here dip my brush in again get the pencil tip nice and wet and come in and color in the tiny little area just a note however once you have finished doing this and i'm not but i'm going to pretend i am grab yourself a paper towel or in this case i have a very dirty rag and just wipe your tip to get the excess fabric medium off. If you don't do that, you will have to resharpen your pencil, which of course wastes the pencil and also um, wastes the color. So there's another tip to use to get into these really small, teeny tiny areas, is just to get the color off the pencil rather than applying the pencil directly. All right, so I'm here at the ear, and um, I was just looking at this ear, and it kind of looks like a musical clef. Um, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd use this area. It's kind of a large area. I'm going to leave that empty, but this whole area surrounding what I am calling the musical clef, um, I'm 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 coating with. A bit of paint that I made up the other day um, and if you stay tuned to the end I will show you how to do this it's actually quite easy and if you watch any of my other videos you've probably seen me do it before but um, for you newbies um, hang tight and at the end I'll, I'll do a, a quick little how-to on creating your own paint but what I want to show you in this is once I've coated it with that paint and while things are still wet, I'm going to bring over the orange sorbet pencil. Um, I'm actually also going to bring over tangerine. And last but not least, poppy red. Okay, now why am I doing this? Because what I really want to do is I want to create some shadow effects by getting it while it's still wet and, and and putting in some outline, some areas that will give the, the whole area in here depth. Now, it's, it's always best to do this once you have applied the base color first and it's still wet. And you can see I'm just coming along and putting, putting it along the edges. The nice thing is since the paint already has 
fabric medium in it. You don't really have to go over it unless you want to um, put put some additional, I don't know, some of the glitz from the from the fabric medium down, or maybe it's starting to dry and you need some more. Um, then I'm going to come in here, just right here at the end, and put a tiny bit of the red, just to kind of give it a bit again of depth. Same thing maybe up here at the corner. Not a lot. Um, I don't want to lose the yellow color. Um, and if you feel like it's too stark, particularly right here with that red, yeah, you, you probably can blend it out a little bit. Notice it will carry the color out and beyond, and that's okay too. You just want to give the whole, a, a, a big area like this just really truly needs something more than just a flat single color um, to make it look interesting. Okay. So one of the things I think that's important when you're doing something that is this detailed is to replicate any pattern um, with the same color. Um, and I just this is this is going to seem weird. You're not going to see it, but I, I, I see it. Um, this little kind of pattern right here reminds me of what's up here in the ear. So I'm going to come along and use the paint in here, but let's talk about what I do see as far as other patterns. We have it down here in the feet. So whatever I decide to do here or here, you want to replicate on, on either side. Likewise, we have a bunch of these same kind of little um, rectangles that kind of form what, what appears to be to almost like a necklace. So here again, you want to stay consistent on either side Finally, do you see that there's kind of a, a pattern that runs down the chest? You know, if I didn't know any better, this almost looks like a halter for this dog. Um, and so I would want to stay consistent on the same patterns and maintain the same colors. Now, what does get a little difficult is if you go into certain areas where, like right here, there, there, there doesn't seem to be anything else or a repeat of that anywhere else. Maybe this down here is repetitive. So just stick with the same color palette. By the way, I, I will be listing the colors up front before I um, make this video so that you can see which colors I used. Also, please note that anything I do a video for, if I have already colored it, you can go to my website and you can find the associated color chart. So I'm calling this the Doodle Doxy. Um, you can go uh, under my website, look for Doodle Doxon. Um, the, under the coloring instructions, you will find the coloring instructions with the paint by number color charts for this dog as I am coloring it now. So just like I did with the black, I like to come back in with the strongest contrasting color to the dark color. And in this case, it's this golden yellow paint. And I like to establish those colors around here first. And what I like to do is pair it up actually with the black. So let me use this one up here as an example. Um, I'm actually going to put it right here on this side of the black. And if I follow the pattern around, it would probably come up over here. Um, I like the idea of getting it in between these two black stripes. And what you're doing is you're just creating some, some strong contrast. You're also creating more consistency across the work itself. Uh, one of the things that I find with all the, these Zentangle patterns 
is they can look pretty crazy on their own. And by establishing your very darks and your very lights, it actually makes it quite a bit easier to apply the other colors. Um, I, I established, when I put the, the yellow up here, or the golden yellow up here and across its nose, I, I knew that that was going to be my dominant light color. So you want to apply those colors, the dark first, mainly because that way you don't see like I can get the yellow into the black and, and you guys can't even see that. Um, and that's a good thing, right? You don't want it to provide um, a lot of areas where you're going to see one color versus the other inside um, the color itself. Okay, so that's just a quickie um, just to show you where I'm going with this. I'm going to place all the yellow down first, then I'm going to move up here to the neck area and do some really same kind of gradient shading along these bars. So I'm done with the yellow for the time being. The more I worked with this, the more I thought I'm going to make him look like he's in prisoner garb if I continue this black and yellow or he's gonna look like he's in Halloween mode, neither of which I want for this dog. So I think what I'm going to start next, again, mentioned earlier, is this kind of neck area and try to create a gradient. Um, but I wanted you to see what it looked like with all of the yellow, at least to the point where I'm at right now, uh, completed against the black. And you can see why I liked to use the two different colors. Great contrast, now that kind of deforms. You can really see the legs. You can see the back hind legs. You can see this as a complete leg. And by doing this, I have defined the rest of the design to where it's actually going to be relatively easy to create some complementary colors similar to what we did here on the head. So I wanted to point out that I've done the neck list, necklaces, and the way I did this was I counted the number of rectangles that I was going to color versus the number of pencils. Um, I believe there were 22 rectangles here. I have eight pencils that works out to be roughly three rectangles for each color. Um, and then down here, I think it was 28. So that worked out again, about four. Now, what happens though, when you have an odd number like you, I did over here, and I'm gonna have the same thing here. Well, let me just kind of walk you through this with each color. By the way, I don't know if you can see these colors, but they range from chili red, poppy red, carmine pink, paprika, tangerine, orange sorbet, and mango. So in order to keep the colors um, similar as to the necklace above, I'm gonna start out first with the mango, then with orange sorbet. And about this moment, I'm going to cross over slightly into the next one. Not much, just a little. Then I'm going to color in with tangerine and I'm going to let tangerine slip in to the next one. And this is the way you can kind of fool the eye into believing that all the colors are uniformly distributed just as they were say over here. You just kind of slip into the next rectangle with the next color and the eye sees all of these colors as kind of merging into one another. And so you don't get a very strong distinction between one versus the other. Of course, part of this is the choice of colors as well. Now, having these colors kind of the same values, and plus we have them all up here and they're very complementary to one another, it helps with the har harmony that you're seeing as these colors go down. 
Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to dip my brush into the fabric medium. And as always, I work light to dark. I'm just scrubbing gently as I go, as I go across each color. Uh, looks like I'm running out of fabric medium there. Try to make sure that you get everything into the stitching and voila. All right, so those are the two necklaces so that you can see how really nice this looks. Gives you a very artistic look and it is relatively easy. So uh, the blues are a little different in that they undulate, meaning they go from dark, light, back the other direction to dark, back to light, back to dark, and they, they go back and forth. And that's because I basically only have three pencils. I have denim, I have iris blue, and Malibu. And so rather than being able to create this nice um, movement effect that I have in the, in the reds and the yellows and oranges, since I only have the three colors, I decided to go ahead and make them undulate rather than going from light until dark. Um, really super easy concept. I, th I think you can get it. Um, I do want you to note, though, that what I did as far as applying the fabric medium, I applied it to the dark first, rinsed my brush, applied it to the medium, which is the iris blue, washed my brush, and now I'm taking care of the Malibu, which is the lightest, again, so that I don't pull up any of the pencil from the dark that may not have gotten enough fabric medium on it or did not have any fabric medium on it to begin with. This is a common complaint I get all the time is, oh, how do I know where the fabric medium is? Trust me, if if you don't put fabric medium down, um, you're gonna find out soon enough, particularly if the colors are close together like that, because you'll end up dragging the area without fabric medium accidentally into the new color that you're working on. So let's focus on this little round circle thing here that I've done. Um, I colored the entire thing first with the light blue Malibu. And then I'm kind of creating, um, making up a circle of iris blue, kind of most of the center, leaving leaving about half in the center of the, the Malibu and then surrounding it with the iris blue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the denim and make a another kind of semi band of color around the two in this circle. And the the key here is is what we're doing is again creating depth and shadow within a, a certain area. Now you're gonna just take your fabric medium on your brush. You're gonna start in the center and I like to just kind of make a scrubbing motion and work my way out to the edge. Try not to bring too much of the dark back into the center and maintain that really nice light look. So let me zoom in so that you can see this a little better. And you can see that it is, it's definitely got some, you know, you can see that the, the center is the light. In other words, the light is shining down on the dog. And we're going to assume that this is like a 3D effect. And you put the light on top and as it recedes away, it gets darker. So another couple of tricks that I'll be using throughout the dog, but I did one, I, and I tried to do that here. I'll be honest with you, when I first did it up here, I wasn't intending to use this color. So I had to kind of make a recovery. And what I could do if I wanted is Inktense has a white pencil. Now it's a dangerous pencil because I'll be very frank with you, when it goes on anything, it tends to 
go down white and chalky, and it, it's very hard to get it blended. Um, and, and hence why I haven't pulled it out because I don't feel it's necessary as of yet. Um, it, it, and it's one of the things I don't try to show beginners. This is an intermediate to advanced technique, but you could put a little bit of tiny of the white right there to lighten up the area to give it the same effect. Although in hindsight, when you look at the dog and, and the fact that its face is slanted down, Perhaps really what I should do is just come in with more dark and then it would get the sense of the the nose and jawline falling down to below its chin. So another little quick tip here. I've just put poppy red down and then towards the end, I ended up coming in with chili red, which is a, a deeper red, but I, I still wanted the sense of the curvature of his body downwards and that as these red stripes approached his belly that they got darker. So here's another little, it's an intermediate trick. You beginners may not want to try this because inevitably people put way too much on. But I grabbed the ink black and I got just ever so much, a, 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 just ever so much a little bit on the tip. And then I'm coming in here and I'm just putting that tiny skosh of black down here at the very base so as just to create a shadow. So you need to be extremely careful with this. You know, ink tense pencils are extremely vivid and you can get too much color, but if you wanted to give it a sense of going in receding, then a little tiny bit of black just at the base can go a long way to give you that shadow effect. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the progress and we're, we're getting towards the end on this little guy. Um, and But I wanted to point out that once again, when I start doubting, okay, where should the colors go? I look for the areas that would offer greater contrast between one section and the other. So, you know, plus I look for repeats. So we have the necklace here. It's sort of repeated here. Um, I'll probably do the same thing here. Um, the same kind of thing that I did up here in the ears appeared to be feasible here and on the leg. Um, so there's, and there's some half semicircles. I'll go back and look and see what I've done elsewhere. But when you start getting to this section, this is where you don't want to twist off and go down a completely different path. You want to try to stay as uniform as possible to the rest of the design, the way you've colored it up here so that it flows all the way down here. Hence, when I look at these stripes down here and see what I did up here, I will carry that same kind of striping color in this section. Um, and as we get to this, the pickier details, you know, a lot of them, and I'm gonna point out to this right here, you may or may not be able to see it. Let me see if I can zoom in just a tidge. Uh, let me move this over just a bit. So right here in this section, there was a whole bunch of stitching. Now, I'll be frank with you, when I had this digitized, I probably should have spent some time cleaning things like this up. To me, all, when it gets really tiny like this and the pattern starts to kind of disintegrate, if you will, or it doesn't hold to the rest of what I see, normally I would go in and delete all those points and just maybe make it a curve. There's a couple of other spots too that don't feel like they fit in the grand scheme of this pattern but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. This is focusing on the coloring and what the coloring should be. And depending on how successful this is with my client base, then I may go out and, and clean this up again and, and then recolor it. So we're towards the end. I, I really don't know that there's anything else I can teach you other than the promised little tip that I will show you once I come back with the finished coloring. 
So stay tuned, don't go away. Okay, everyone, so for the most part, the doxy is done. And I personally am quite pleased. Um, you know, looking at the colors, even through the camera like this, I, f I find that they are balanced. Now, yes, I still have the tail to do, but, but that's really insignificant. That is just the coda to the, to the rest of the dog. Um, but I, I really, really, really happy with the colors. So I will post in the links below where you can find the Doxy instructions. Um, they, I, you know, and this guy looks so good. I'm, I may even bling him. Yep. I may have to just because he looks so good colored that the bling would just add to it. So stay tuned. I will give you the secret to creating paint here in just a second. Okay. So this is not going to be a deep, dark secret, but it is different. And then in the past, I've always done this with one pencil, but now I'm going to show you basically how to do it with two pencils. And you can do this with any kind of combination of pencils that you may have on hand. It really just depends on the color you're trying to achieve. So you may recall that I used paint here, here, and a lot of this golden yellow color. Well, I use these two pencils throughout the coloring Actually, both of them are used right up here on the nose. But neither color was exactly the one I wanted. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to break off the tips of both pencils. And notice, let me bring this up to the camera so that you can see this. There's, you know, about the same size in both of them. And what you're going to do is take a bit of fabric medium, and do try to make this just a bit. Don't get crazy. You'll see this in a minute. Okay, so maybe that much, which is maybe six or seven drops. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna obviously start swirling it around. Now, I have another video where I, I talk about scraping the ink tense pencils or the blocks with a cheese grater. You know, that works great. That's my favorite method. But if you don't have a cheese grater on hand and um, you have just sharpened pencils, the easiest thing in the world is just basically do what I'm doing right here. Now, I'm not going to sit here and film this entire thing. I think you can get the picture by watching what I'm doing here. Once these have melted, and it takes about 20 minutes completely when they're as big a tip as say that one is right there, um, and then you've got two of them. So I'd give it 20 to 30 minutes, and you can actually just let it sit in the fabric medium, and it will eventually liquefy. Then once you have melted them completely, you could add more fabric medium to be able to extend the amount that you use. But that's it in a nutshell. I, I, and I encourage people to do this because as Inktense now has 100 pencil colors, they're great, love them. And, and, and I don't know that any of y'all realize this, but with the list that I provided in the opening, some of the pencils that I'm using are some of the brand new pencils that they released in 2023. And in fact, both of these are the new pencils. One is mango and the other is orange sorbet. So you're gonna get a color that is unique and it is not something that you're going to find in pencil form. Now you could possibly find other watercolor pencils that do this. So I, I, I'm encouraging you that when you want to create your own paint and why should you create your own paint? Well, just as you saw when I was doing this down here, it allows you to uniformly color these areas. Oh, look, it's actually, um, when it goes on wet, it's actually deeper than the color that was when it's dried. But do bear that in mind when you when you put this paint down. It, it will dry 
differently than when you um, first initially put it on. Part of it is too, I've got probably a lot of concentrate here. In any event, try doing this because number one, it'll give you a custom color. And number two, it will give you ease to spread the paint in some of these smaller areas. And if you need a wider area colored, you have plenty enough. I mean, honestly, I could do the entire dog with the areas that I did here with just that little bit. So with that, that ends the Doxy Doodled tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or you can go to my website, www.medinadomarts.com, uh, sign up for the newsletter, and or you will find my email address, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about coloring on fabric. And in the meantime, if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe uh, on the appropriate buttons below. And as always, thanks for watching.